Okay. Hello from Tokyo. Yeah. Hello from Burbank. All right, let's get right into it because I want you to set the record straight on Rossi Ogawa. Tell me all about yeah. it. What, what's up? Yeah, well, a lot of things that, uh, well, I haven't read everything about it in English speaking mm. podcasts, but it seems to me that none of these, you know, what well, I'm not attacking them. They're good fans, I'm sure. But、uh, everything they're talking about on, on the so called Joshi podcast, you know, it's something that they've read, you know, read or heard elsewhere.、Mm. And it's reproduction of your hearsay and a little bit of your opinions. And、uh, none of them, I'd say I'm not attacking them. Okay. They're great fans. I'm, I'm pretty sure. But、uh, what we're going to talk about today is my first hand information. That's right. Good enough? Yeah. I think that's more than good enough. Okay. And the first thing first, up until two weeks ago,、uh, to be exact, up until 13 days ago, when you talk about Rossi, Ogawa, and Storm, they were one and the same. Okay. Yeah, up until not even two weeks ago, up until 13 days ago, when you talk about stardom, we're talking about Rossi Ogawa. When you talk about Rossi Ogawa, we're talking about stardom, okay? But the, the parent company of stardom, Bushiroad Fight. Bushiroad Fight is another this segment, smaller company, off of the big parent company, Bushiroad. That's right. They're not、big、the same,、Bush. even、yeah. though there is Bushiroad, New Japan, and Bushiroad Fight. With stardom, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. used to be like a kickboxing, and there were yeah, they, yeah they closed down, yeah, the yeah, kickboxing segment of that, yeah. But it, that it's how portion, it started, the、like、portion、that. of the company, yeah, they wanted to make it separate,、mm-hmm, but the、mm-hmm. parent company, meaning that the capital, money, the fund come from the same.、Mm-hmm. But the thing is, though, they don't send Bush Road, wouldn't send their top brain executive into Bush Road fight. That, that's a problem, right? You know, yeah, they're, they're sending guys that they don't want.、Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But anyhow, that's not, that's, I'm not here to bad, you know, really bad mouth thing, you know, anybody, but、uh, I want to give everybody the, the clear picture of what's been happening, okay?、Mm. Please.、Yeah. And people seem to know very little about Rossi, Rossi Ogawa.、Mm. And, Really bothered me when I heard the thing that I said, Rossi's been brainwashing wrestlers. It's like, brainwashing who? What? And they don't seem to understand the value and experience and the vision of Rossi. The Rossi's been around since 1978, beauty pair era. Okay. And the boom, the early 80s boom period of Crash Girls, Lioness Asuka and, and Chigusa Nagayo era. Because thanks to Rossi's hard work, they became superstar, like larger than life superstar. Cultural. And they were popular, of course. Yeah, like a cross media, cross promotion, cross genre. You know, Crash Girls weren't just wrestling superstar, but they had the opera, they had the movie, they had the record, singing record, they, 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 all kinds of merchandising things, all these things that Crash Girls' era was huge. And Rossi was behind it. And also, 90s. Oh, okay.、Uh, before I forget, he made Medusa star in Japan.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember that? And after Medusa, the Debbie Malenko, the Reggie Bennett,、uh, yeah, all these Americans who came to live in Japan, that Rossi arranged it. Okay. And 90s, cross promotion boom period, if you remember. All Japan women against JWP, against LLPW, against women division of FMW, you know, just. Budokan to Yokohama Arena to all the way to Tokyo Dome, that era, remember?、Mm-hmm. Rossi was the brain behind it. Then, after that、uh, financial you know, thing hit, all Japan women and wrestlers leaving, and when that was back in 1997, Rossi left all Japan women to form RCN. Yeah, The company wasn't exactly a great success, but they had a five year run. Then he, Rossi was also running Fuka Matsuri, if you remember, Fuka's show.、Mm-hmm. And Fuka was training a whole bunch of girls not, without really having any plan to run any shows. You know what I'm saying?、Mm-hmm. The, if you remember Fuka, he, she was popular and had friends, on, I mean, personal friends and direct friends and friends on, on, on the web and, or, or the social media. Then Fuka, you know, 
just kind of gathered girls, you know, come over and practice. Oh, let's work out. Mm. And all of a sudden, 10 girls all ready to debut without no company, right? Mm. Then Fuka called Rossi. We've been training girls. I've been training girls. Fuka said that. Come to, that was in Shinkiba Ring when Shinkiba, you know, let go, you know, wrestlers, you know, rent a place to practice because they always have wrestling ring there. Then Fuka was already training like a eight, ten girls. And Rossi came over and said, So you guys train these girls without any actual plans. I mean, to run shows or anything like that. So, you know, watch the practices. Some of these girls are actually ready to debut. And then Rossi said, I guess I have to start the company again. <laughs> so that was 13 years ago. It was the beginning of stardom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wasn't even planning on starting stardom. That's how almost naturally that uh, Fuka came to Rossi, you know, again, that, hey, I want to start something. And then there you have that start, beginning of stardom. In that practice session, they had people like Mayu Iwatani in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyhow, so it's been 13 years now. But uh, like I said a minute ago, up until two weeks ago, when we talk about Rossi, we were talking about stardom. When we were talking about stardom, we were talking about Rossi, Rossi's company. But now we have to, you know, really separate it, not to confuse anybody. Let's say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say like this version of stardom or mm -hmm. Bushy Road stardom yes. and yeah. Rossi's new company. Rossi's new company already has name, already has logo, already ordered championship belt, and already have schedules lined up, not announced. So see, I, I'm not going to be able to say everything I know about this because Rossi ha has to be the one to announce it officially. Mm. Starting course. date and the building they have already booked and the plans they have. And it is it's very important very important to, to, to understand this one. Rossi is not trying to create second set of stardom. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He left the company, right? Well, Bushiroad says they fired him. Okay. Rossi actually gave notice back in November. He was leaving. Yeah. And, but as soon as that the Bush Road company found out that the Rossi is trying to start her, his own new company and taking some of the girls from stardom. So it's like a tempering, tempering, you know, the, these, mm -hmm. you know, these wrestlers are under, uh, under contract. And it's like, you cannot even talk to girls. Rossi didn't. He was going to leave and start new company. And Bush Road executive knew about it. And they, they have to admit they, they knew about it. They even talk about, okay, three years from now, let's have your new company against Stardom, the cross-promotion war. Three years from now. All right, see you later, right? But uh, uh, just as soon as this Rossi's move and uh, most of the girls from Stardom wanted to get out of there, that's when this Bushiro decided to, this Stardom decided to have real quick announcement on, on the media that the Rossi's contract being terminated effective immediately mm. he's tried to steal talent from our company and he's been terminated right and that they did that to make him look bad that much and the very next day uh rossi uh you know didn't counter but of course sure enough tokyo sports went to rossi to have interview to get his side of the story of uh, naturally he couldn't say everything about it but yes he left the company and they knew about it. But the yesterday, you know, the, right after the 13th you know, anniversary show, everybody got picture taken in the ring and everything that the front cover of Weekly Pro Wrestling Magazine, the whole bit. They had a, the, the wrestlers meeting right away, the dressing room, announcing in front of all the talent that the Rossi's contract being terminated effective immediately. They sent him home. You know, it's like, oh, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Yeah. Anyhow, that, uh, they, this day and age, it's interesting that uh, like back in 80s and 90s into 2000, you know, the, the, this Japanese news going to English speaking world, you know, a lot of times I was like, like they, a lot of people assumed or, or even accused me of my giving, every, you know, all the info to Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer. That's not it now. That uh, I don't. I don't think Wrestling Observer is as popular as it used to be. For one thing, 
And also that uh, now that it's most of these uh, Japanese articles that come out on weekly pro wrestling, Tokyo Sports, the Nikkan Sports, the Yahoo Japan News, and all that, or you know, Rakuten or something, mm. that has been translated into English by Google translation, mm. Mm. like a minute after. Mm. So it's out there, you know. And something's always miss, you know, m- missing in the translation. And also, even if your translation was right, you still don't get this this nuance. Mm-hmm. Does that mean? Does it make sense? Nuance or missing a piece of the context, like a really key part. That's yeah, yeah. maybe maybe something from history, or maybe it's, you know. Sometimes in a Japanese news article, there's things that are left out intentionally. You know. Yeah, that too, we're yeah. we're supposed to know. So, it makes sense. In Google translation, do not read between lines. Not at all. Yeah, but those are important things. Anyhow, that uh, yes, Rossi is a new starting new company, mm. and also like the, it's it's been almost like a common understanding in this podcast world, in English speaking Joshi world out there that it's like a big exodus, right? Like right. Miss, you know, Miss, Mitsuharu Misawa leaving all Japan to form Pro Wrestling Noah, and everybody, the referee, the ring crew, the music guy, to the sound guy, to the it's not like that. <clears throat> It's not like that. a very, very different situation. Yeah. Very different. And also, Rossi wouldn't say no if, you know, Russell want to <clears throat> come to his his group, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's not like he wanted to take all the wrestlers out of this stardom, then start his own company. That's not the scenario. And that's why I said Rossi is not trying to create a second set of stardom. He wants to start the company that can develop and you know you know the, the scout and discover and train and debut new talent to the next you know next generation. That is completely different from that uh, Bushiroad philosophy of business. See, in, th- this is my opinion. Bushiroad or Bushiroad executives that was involved in in stardom business they don't respect wrestling they don't respect wrestlers they did not respect Rossi Ogawa the thing was when the company was purchased by Bushiroad parent company back in 2019 just like months before pandemic then the year 2020 comes big pandemic the, the slowest business ever right but the 2020, 21, 23, 23, 24, it's a four-year operation. And the basic deal was, though, that Bushiroad will take over all the business end of the company. Take it, you know, the building, booking, and, and the scheduling, transportation, and, of course, the, the copyright material and merchandise. Mm. Yeah. And... Ticket sales, that's the wrestling company. That and that that end of the, the portion of the business, all Bush Road. That was a promise that actual software, the creative end of the professional wrestling would be handled by executive producer Rasi Ogawa. Mm-hmm. That was the deal. That means they are not going to oversee what what's taking place in the dressing room or backstage or in Rossi's dressing room or the what be the uh, your long term you know long term storyline to your immediate storyline or the character of the wrestlers or the most importantly who goes up and down mm-hmm. it's wrestling but uh, for some reason from the t- time went on they started overruling what Rossi's were doing and they started doing things at, like I put the hands on the creative end of the wrestling business. And then uh, uh, Rossi kind of knew about it because, yeah, when the purchase is done, they say re- the, the business end of the wrestling and creative end of the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the creative end of the business and this business portion of the business all overlap because you wouldn't be able to produce this merchandise until the, this wrestler's baby face turn. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you cannot announce so and so and so and so is going to produce movies. 
mm-hmm. until this is done in the ring first. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. But they have no idea how this wrestling thing works. And also, they're the owner of the company. They pretty soon they started making plans about wrestling itself. And Rossi started going like this, you know, like the first year, second year, second. I had it. Remember that like a ha- Halloween special, like one one of the matches they had the uh, one night they had this, you know, hardcore match and uh, casket match and yes. false count anywhere match and this or the, the five, six different kind of death matches with mm. no reason. Mm. This death match, cage match is I mean I, I might be old fashioned, but the, that means to settle the score, right? These two yeah. wrestlers had been feuding months and months to settle the score once and for all. You'll put these two wrestlers into cage. That means something. Mm-hmm. That's why, yeah. basically. But they they don't understand this gimmick and the storyline and the character. And also, non wrestling people learning about ups and downs of res- this wrestling thing. It's like, oh, so you can cast any wrestlers and make them champion. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way in wrestling, does it? It shouldn't. I mean, I see. If it is some, what do you think about what's going on with New Japan right now? And it seems like it's kind of similar to what you're explaining. Yeah, but they never let them in. I mean, Jado and Gedo will never tell Bushiro the, the all the details. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or who goes over on on, on the G1 Climax tournament this mm-hmm. year? Or, you know, ahead of time, they are not gonna tell you that. So, so division is separated. And also, what bothers me is that these Bushiro the executive, you know, coming from the parent company Bushiro, mm-hmm. they don't say these things to New Japan wrestlers, mm-hmm. male superstars. Why would why do they think they can come and start touching creative end of the business because they're female athlete? Seems like an issue. It seems like an yeah. issue. I feel like I've heard complaints from people within Bushiro workers and performers that have always complained about not exactly what you're saying about associates getting themselves involved in creative, but maybe overstepping and yeah, yeah. and the feeling of disrespect that you described earlier. Yeah, feeling of disrespect because they look at wrestling as product. Mm-hmm. Wrestlers are always also products, and the matches and the footage of videos and likenesses that are contents that mm. they own, mm. you know, so they can do anything about. It. And it's not like human doing see, wrestling. Wrestling is really human, and the business end of it. Oh God, it's like it's, it's a ba- such a baby way to think about it as a business. That's fine, but. Wrestling, I've always said said this, and I'll say it again, that wrestling is a very strange creature mm. of, with the mind of its own. You never know what works out and what, what gets over, what doesn't. You cannot plan things, you know, like you're going to promote this wrestler to make him a star. Therefore, people will be buying all the merchandise. Mm. Wrestling itself is a very strange creature, and wrestling fans also pretty strange creature oh, indeed. yeah yeah so it's like you have to be a wrestling person wrestling people to understand mm. what people like and what people dislike yeah it's not a mobile game yeah not a mobile it's... game and also wrestlers are not just the faces on their trading card it's complex it's a lot yeah. more it's it you can't just explain it one or two sentences it's not yeah, something that's yeah. Engineer, and hope, like, yeah, hope they learn from it because g- back to what Rossi is, you know, is going to be doing is that mm-hmm. not all the wrestlers are going to Rossi's new company, okay? Mm-hmm. Only handful, and only handful about this. <laughs> and main event talent, okay? Main event talent, and also a veteran who can train people. Mm-hmm. And this. I'm going to say it again. This is not a second set of stardom. This new company is a new chapter of Rossi's evolution, okay? That they are aiming to, you know, discover a new, you know, raw talent rookie, train them, develop them, 
and debut them in this new company. And the company is a- aiming next five to 10 years. Whereas I don't think this version of Bushiroad Stardom will develop wrestlers or debut wrestlers there、Mm-mm. any longer. And I don't know if they think dojo system is all that important there.、Mm-hmm. You know, what Rossi will have first is a dojo to, for everybody to practice. There's a wrestling ring in there. The people, you know, wrestlers come in and actually train. It's, it's the professional wrestling. And they will have name talent. They will have name talent. But it's not like you are developed, you know, splitting stardom in half or see most of the, the podcasts out there, you know, I'm not, I'm not really bad mouthing them, but the, they are all assuming that the, it's the big exodus. It's new, is it the stardom? Stardom and Rossi's new company is that like a 50 50 split? Is that like a 70 30 split? I want to know. It, it is split, but it's not like the almost like in Rossi's head, the days of stardom era is done now. So, already thinking of his new development, new company. They got the name, they got the logo, they've already ordered the championship belt. They They booked the date. They already started you know, moving towards their own plan. How soon will it be? Is there a timetable,、uh, a specific time? Can you say roughly this roughly, year? Yeah. This year? Yeah. 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 This summer? Actually, yes. Possibly. Oh, oh, before. Before. Okay. There's a window. So. Yeah. Yeah. Then they'll be running places like a Korakan, you know? And I believe they'll be already this year sometime, we'll be running places like Sumo Palace. Very interesting. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean. So, what they don't understand about Rossi is that you and I talked about that before. s e e Rossi's career, you know, I, I should say now that the,、uh, Rossi's legacy started back in 1987, Beauty Pair era, in the age of 19. 20, he, when he started working for All Japan Women, the, the Matsunaga Brothers version of All Japan Women, you know, and early 80s into、uh, late 80s, the, the Crash Girls era. The name Crash Girls, Rossi came up with it, you know. They were like, they were underneath tag team, underneath people like Jaguar Yokota and Devo Masami. But this Crash Girls, Lioness Asuka, and Chigusa Nagayo gotten so popular, but she just, there was a, had a momentum. And Rossi really was driven to do this and that, recording,、uh, you know, singing and dancing and doing the musical, opera, the, the, the theatrical movie, to all the merchandise that they have. In the, you know, well, today, every wrestling company has merchandise. But、uh, in the 80s, all they had was like a t shirt and keychains, right?、Mm-hmm. But、uh, they came up with all kinds of gimmick that、uh, they became everyday thing in wrestling. And ring names like Dump Matsumoto, Bonakano, the Crane Yu, the Grizzly Yuamoto, the Bison Kimura, the Aja Kang, it all came from Rossi's desk. People don't know that. And I, yeah, I asked Rossi you know, over time, like, why don't you take credit? Because he'd done it and said, if you start telling people, I did this, I did that,、like, they'll dislike you because of it. You know? In Japan, yeah. Yeah. So it's like he'd rather not say and enjoy how people's loving it. You know? Or like ring names like Akira Hokuto. Yeah. yeah. Suzuka Minami. And then all the dream old card. Oh, Jumping Bomb Angel name. All came from Ross's desk. Matsunaga Brothers didn't do it. They, they, Matsunaga Brothers sell shows, you know, and then they can fry noodles, yes. They can count cash in the box office. They book building 300 nights a year, all these things. But creative end, you know, the Jimmy Kayama, the, the third, fourth brother of Matsunaga Brothers, and Toshikuni, they were doing it. But Rossi was really behind this wrestling mind, this ring name to costume to. Like a more tomboy looking team to a girly looking team to a big heel to all these characters that they, you kind of drew a map. And that was Rossi. 
And he always said that, he told me that、uh, it's like his hidden pleasure to know that he's done it, but not telling people about it. You know, very humble, right? I see. Yeah. Then after Crash Girls, he, he was the one who brought Medusa to Japan. He made her a star in Japan. And that last, the Medusa, Alondra Blade, still talk, you know, is talking about it to this date. Yeah. 90s cross promotion, All Japan Women against JWP, against LLPW, against FMW Women's Division, and all these, just all the women's wrestling company got together and then ran big shows in Yokohama Arena, the Sumo Palace, the Nippon Budokan, all the way to Tokyo Dome. It was Rossi's idea.、Mm -hmm. So it's not like, Rossi just came out of nowhere to start stardom. It's like if they don't know about this history, they better study history. And a lot of Western fans, if they're not familiar, Rossi was also behind the original visit to WWF in 1995. Ah,、uh, the Survivor, Survivor series? series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that was the first time I had ever seen. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I mean, they brought Aja、yeah. Kong, the Kyoko, you know, the、uh, Saki Hasegawa, the, yeah. Chaparita Asari. Chaparita Asari,、uh, yeah. Laune Saska. Aja Kong, Aina Saska. a l a n d r a Blaze was there. a l a n d r a Blaze was there, yeah, because she was the one who put, put together the idea and all that. And it was going to be Aja Kong against a l a n d r a Blaze, the following Ro Royal Rumble. That never happened.、Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But anyhow, yeah, that's right. That's like a. It's like a It was good you know, exposure huh, for a Western fan to know about. And also,、yeah. uh, 87, it was it,、uh, Itsuki Yamazaki、right. and yeah, that Norio Tateno's Jumping Bomb Angels, you know, like a 10 month run like little, against little Glamour Girl. Tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That opened a lot of you know, open eyes for Japanese wrestling. Whoa, you know, like, that's how they. They were doing, throwing missile kick off the top rope before anybody was doing it.、Mm -hmm. yeah. And also the bridge up, like、uh, you are, that, well, you could, today's, today's term, that matrix. <laughs> sure, yeah. The, the bridging out of the pin. Yeah, yeah. And then gets, gets up all the way. Yes. Yeah, and and yeah. It, no, no support from the like just all the core muscles, just going back. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. also, the jumping bomb angels. Crash Girls had toy in America, but it wasn't the Japanese female that、yeah. they imagined. But jumping bomb angel s was this Japanese tall black hair here and looks so Japanese. And they, they, people thought they were twins, they weren't.、Mm -hmm. But you know, that's like your almost stereotypical Japanese women looking, but does this just ass kicking professional wrestling. And、uh, oh, thanks to Lilani Kai and Judy Martin, great、course. catchers. Yeah, but、uh, that kind of run. And yes, also Rossi was behind that and that kind of things. And see, if you study these things, that the, you will know more about Rossi and how he had to leave this current stardom environment. Mm. Yeah. I tell you one more time. See, this, this version of Bushiro, the ex, you know, fight executive, did not respect wrestling, did, did not respect, respect wrestlers, and did not respect Rossi Ogawa. And Julia made a comment about a month ago on a long interview, and they kicked one president out of there, the Harada guy. Then they brought this、uh, Taro Okada from Bushiro to fight. To be、mm. president, 35 year old president. Now he thinks he's running it.、Mm. Yeah. I remember it's maybe four or five years ago, we went to a stardom show and it was right before all of this started, right before B Bushi Road. It was just, they just come in with stardom. The, the deal just happened. Julia had left Ice Ribbon that week. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was, It was going to be like Bushi Road plus Hana Kimura. It was the whole, it was a very, very specific feeling. And everything that show, it was,、uh, what was it? The, the, the Grand Prix finals, Grand Prix. It felt that it was a very different company at that time. And I really think that around that point, maybe that, during that winter, there is pre stardom. Yeah, they, were still, they were still new. The Bushiro executive I'm talking about, they were still new and they were careful about it. 
And about a year later, they start saying, all right, I know wrestling now. And then start overruling everything Rossi was doing. Then Rossi said, huh? It wasn't a deal. Mm. And also, yeah, I don't know if I should say this, but, you know, if you remember Jung Jungle Kyona? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was a, you know, she wrestled uh, best, best you know, Jungle Kyona of Stardom. Stardom. You know? She wrestled in yeah. the Wrestling Noah show uh, last year. Oh, okay. After she came back from the yeah. knee injury. Okay. Yes. She was the best friend of Hana Kimura. Mm -hmm. Okay. She, she pitched the idea to Stardom to have Hana Kimura Memorial Show. They should have had it. Don't you think? I was always wondering why they didn't do it. They did. Uh, and then basically fired. Well, well Kiona wanted to leave too, but uh, they basically fired her because they're over it. I mean, the, the feelings around it all. Who, yeah, anybody. Who it have, was the end of the era. Have, it felt like have, that. You know, Hana Kimura's memorial show, Stardom should have done it. Of course they should. I was always wondering and, why and, they never Kidani did it. But Kidani said that the big boss of of Bushiro, the Bushiro Trading and you know, the game game company. Mm -hmm. No, I, we're not help, We're not helping. To, we're not helping Kyoko. Not knowing Kyoko Kimura was a star wrestler before, you know. And then also they did not want to fight Network Channel Channel yes. Fuji, Channel Eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you support. Hana Kimura and the Memorial Show and all these, you know, that the Kyoko Kimura's cars with the company that it will make Channel Eight Fuji Television an enemy or something. Yeah, yeah. So they all in all, they didn't do it. They did not run Hana Kimura Memorial Show. And shortly after that, Jungle Kyona was fired. Ugh. It's a different company. It became a different company around that time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they didn't help anything on on, on uh, Hanakimura end at all, and evidently, Rasi couldn't flex his muscle either on that, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of things start happening, and, and, and uh, Rasi finally made up his mind that these people don't understand wrestling. That the, the only way to fix this is for him to leave. Yeah, it's been about over about a year that mm. he made up his mind. You know, he stayed through 2023 and gave finally gave notice back in November of last year, and they knew he was going to leave. And leave, you know, Rossi leaving automatically means that he's going to start the new wrestling women's wrestling company. Of course, that's mm. what he does. You know, and they knew about it. And they even said that, okay, after uh, three years, you know, let's have Rossi's new company against Stardom and have a cross-promotional big show. So they understood that too. But uh, now that in order to make Rossi look really bad, that they terminated his, you know, contract before the due day, due, and announced it like it's a, it's a news. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tokyo Sports, Nikon Sports, Yahoo News, that the uh, Rockstein News, all these out news outlet, sport outlet, they will all cover it, mm -hmm. and that will always be translated with Google translate translation right away in this day and age. Does that make sense? And uh, yeah, we get an answer that's not quite true, but it's not completely false either it's it's like a game of telephone that goes around and it gets to the english speaking audiences and it's n it's not the right Completely story. different story yeah yeah so i'm but happy to again, get the, not the, understanding the, rossi's value and his you know his vision and what he has uh, he had accomplished hmm. that they go well they, who needs rossi it's like a bye bye rossi it's like stardom stay the same but i'll give you a good evidence this this you know this week Actually, Stardom had two Korakan shows this week. Mm -hmm. One, yeah, yeah, two Korakan shows. One on Valentine's Day and one tomorrow. Then Saturday, yeah. Mm -hmm. They did not even come up with the lineup next last week. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. It's wrestling. You know, running wrestling shows or wrestling companies not just putting together lineups. You have lineup. You have ups and downs. You have short-term storyline. You have long-term storyline. And schedule 
or who to push, who not to push, or who's going to turn from here to baby face, or somebody's going to, you know, walk out of one faction and join another faction. That's a big storyline that will create the who against who. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't just put together names and somebody against somebody, somebody against somebody, and who's going over. Like, it, it, it takes professional person to do so. Mm. Yeah. There's an art to it. Yeah. Yeah. And also you have to have just vision and understanding and pe- who people like, who, who, I mean, what this special thing about this certain character, certain wrestler, what to polish and not what not to polish or you know this girl is good when he when she does this but not so good with this kind of storyline mm. does that make sense mm-hmm. yeah not everybody work alike some people are this some people are technical some people are just great being here you know it's okay not to be all lean and pretty sometimes you need chunky fat heel or the you know, told somebody told to do the big boot, or you know, a smaller girl to do a lucha libre, or just but it has to fit into a certain, I mean, perfect place. That's like the whole, you know, wrestling, you know, thing. Mm. And we'll see how they do it. You know, yeah, we'll have to keep our eye on on the news. Yeah, cause it's, 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 I'm sure that the, I I've been sounding very one sided, like talking about you know talking Rossi's side of the story, but evidently this. On on the Valentine's Day, the February fourteenth, mm-hmm. Stardom already saw empty Korakuen Hall. Mm. Already you started. Know? Yeah, because fans are very natural to feeling things. Something's definitely happening in that company, and not everybody's saying all these details, but it, it will all come out. They want to know who's leaving and who's staying. You know, mm-hmm. and over last weekend. Mayu Iwatani was posting her ex Twitter very almost disturbing post like help me you know I hate myself this, this is a, no. let's not go there right mm. there are wrestlers within this version of Star Wars who wants to leave but can't leave feel stuck you know and maybe you know a year from now January 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 of 2025 more wrestlers will be leaving Stardom to join, you know, Rossi's new company. But it's not Rossi's goal to get all the wrestlers from Stardom. Stardom should remain Stardom, you know, go for it. But this chapter of Rossi's, you know, adventure, he wants to start wrestling company again from the scratch. Just handful main event wrestlers to start and five Americans. But the goal is to discover your golden rookie and make this new wrestler a main event star, say, two to three year period. Remember when he started RCM back in 1997? Mm-hmm. He got a, a, a lot of wrestlers from all Japan women, but Ninja the Kong. golden, yeah, 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 Reggie Bennett, that Mariko Yoshida, and all that. But the golden rookie was Ayako Hamada. That's right. That was where yeah. she's, she, she never, was she in All Japan no, Women? No, she was too young. No, never. Oh, not just that, was waiting because she was a daughter of great, you know, Grand Hamada, was always like wanted to be in that ring as a kid. But was she living in Japan? It. Huh? Was she living in No, she in wasn't Japan? living in Japan then. She was in Mexico. She was like a 13, 14 living in Mexico. I see. But I the see. Grand Hamada, father Grand Hamada was back in Japan. She was all ready to come in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she, Rossi already have this golden rookie. That's uh, right. Candidate. Yeah. Candidate. I mean, in his hand now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And That's a great right. coach too. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like you'll have second set of stardom. So it's not a big exercise that's like a 50-50 split, 70-30 split. Some five, six main event talent are coming. They already told the company, told the stardom that they are not re-signing their contract. Mm-hmm. And they know who they are, but stardom's not saying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Is that weird? It is. I don't want to say it's, I mean, not weird, but I feel like I've heard echoes of this a little bit throughout the news cycles the past couple of years, both with stardom and with New Japan. But I don't know. All that I can hope for is that Rossi, like you said, the next chapter of his career, it's not, this is going to be, it, it, all eyes are going to be on him this year. So, we're, yeah, we're, and it's not the second set of, second portion of stardom. Stardom should be stardom. You know, mm-hmm. they're there, you know, and Rossi is not there to really destroy them like a enemy. Rossi wanted to do his own thing. And only way to do so, he had to leave. Mm-hmm. And then start mm-hmm. a new company from the scratch. And for American or English speaking world, it's very important that the, he does not have corporate backer. He would do it with his own money. So that's true in the spirit. I guess, yeah. But the stardom started that way. Yeah, independent, independent meaning independent of any uh, uh, financial backing. Yeah, yeah. But to this day and age, you know, way back in 70s and 80s and 90s, you needed to have TV money. Yes, you know, TV right money for like annual income to make that uh, you calculate your budget. You know, like you get so and so million dollars from this TV station annually. Therefore, you can structure your schedules and live shows and you know, wrestlers' salary scale and all these things. But this time, it's on the internet streaming service that people pay per show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he'll have that, yeah. Not your traditional television, but a streaming oriented, yeah, yeah. Very but different. It, yeah, it will be interesting as they'll actually. There are over fifteen women's wrestling company in Japan. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> Sometimes I couldn't even count anymore, you know, because another one might start this over this weekend. Yeah, I mean, geez, in the past two weeks, we've gotten so much news. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Ross is doing it. And uh, yeah. And also, like, uh, you know, that the current red belt champion of stardom getting mad at both Bushiroad and Rossi. I'm talking about Micah, who's champion, world Mm -hmm. champion right now, that she had a great match and had a great title match and defense. You know, she did her best to have great match and defend the belt and everything. Nobody's talking about it. Mm. All the news went to big split of Rossi and Bushy Road and falling out and this and that. It's all politics kind of thing. And what about wrestlers and ma- re- actual wrestling matches? I can see that. Micah has been a very good champion. That was her time to shine. That's that's the new trend that's been happening a lot. That's you know when whenever there is great wrestling happening, there's always something that people are more interested in, like CM Punk or uh, Vince McMahon stuff. Or it's just that's how people are more attracted to that. Seemingly, <laughs> unfortunately, raw. it's just yeah. yeah, it's it's a part of the something wrestling. sticky. It's that mutated extra limb that's coming out of pro wrestling it's wasn't intended but it's there that's just how it is it's the nature of the new business like it's just yeah. we, we could talk about how much we liked it how it used to be but it's that's how it is going yeah, forward but uh, when i go to the building i really enjoy show and i think Matches. that's the key is going to the yeah. show you gotta go and be in person and experience yeah. it yeah. like like a human thing like you were saying earlier it's very human so you need yeah, to yeah, it's a very strange creature. Wrestling yes. fans are and wrestling itself is the strange creature with a mind of its own. Mm-hmm. And it's oh. always evolving at very quickly, always in a in a s- unexpected ways too. Mm-hmm. 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 It's there's oh there's the, the there's the talent, there's the business side, and there's the fans. The and third the, and also like a third factor that we don't know about. I think it's the fans. I think because because yeah. they, you can't predict what the full fan like uh, the fans as one one element as well. Like an entity. <laughs> you get like like the, the collective or, soul. Customers or fans yeah. or or, or the market, business. the market. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's one part that you, it's hard to predict what's going to happen because it's based on so many different things. What's going on in everybody's lives in the world, in the countries that you're in, 
economy, cultural hot topics, health issues, things change so quickly. So the wrestling, wrestling has to always adapt to what's happening in the world, whatever it may be. However, non or unwrestling it may be, wrestling has to, oh, you can't stop bringing in things from the outer world. The whole key with wrestling and, and the best wrestling is bringing in what is happening right now. Yeah, that goes with the, what's really happening in all the wrestling fans' mind lately that uh, they, lot, I mean, a lot of people actually, you know, older fans over 50 feel guilty about liking and what have been watching WWE f- for so long. Mm. And now you understand the man, the big boss was pure evil. <laughs> you know, and feel guilty for you know watching and supporting you know the product for so long, but I always you know we had even in Japan we have that discussion and conversation, but we always say that there was wrestling before Vince, and there will be wrestling bef- after Vince, and Vince McMahon did not create everything, mm. and certainly. He didn't create us, you know? Hey, listen, we were at Tokyo Dome about a year ago with yeah. 30,000 people, and there was no, nothing had to do with Vince McMahon. Not oh, one thing. oh, you're talking about the Keiji Muto's retirement? There were uh, a Tokyo lot of dome. people in that dome yeah. that On didn't care. On Tuesday night or something? On a Tuesday like a, night. Yeah, school night, and no freebies, like walk up, like a genuine 35,000 people. People were really? buying merchandise at 11 in the morning. There was a huge line. <laughs> yeah, and also, that was a night that uh, you walk around the hall, you know, like, you know, not just merchandise, but they just go get a popcorn or something or just walk around the aisles. Like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Mm-hmm. Keep running to people you used to, uh, you haven't seen in eight years, you know, and just, no, this one, I had to make it. It's like, <laughs> backstage you know, was, was the, night. backstage was just every company's guys. Just walking yeah. around because they all had their own dressing rooms, but everybody was just, oh, there's Kano walking around in his, you know, s- sandals. Uh, there's a uh, Okada is coming in with the ten thousand dollar suit and the Gucci bag <laughs> and his two two. They weren't wrestlers, but they had suits to his, you know, his posse, his entourage. And he had his like people, it, it, all different worlds Today's crossing path. Yeah. Very oh, much. Yeah. Very much felt like Ric Flair. Very much felt like Nick Bockwinkle. It felt, it felt <laughs> yeah, very world champion. Every like. company is all the wrestlers, you know, but kind of mingled. And the great atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah. It was awesome. It was amazing. Yeah. But and uh, For somebody like Keiji Muto, today's wrestling hero. And he really had his final match that night. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, and the bonus truck with Chono, too. Uh, that... I mean that <laughs> it's amazing, but I do want to. Looking back now, I I, I want to give the credit where credits due. I think Tetsuya Naito was awesome in that match. I think I, I don't think people give him the credit. I think that was his match. That was his yeah. maybe his best match ever. Just yeah. It. So we don't have to feel you know terrible about being wrestling fan. You know, Mm-mm, no way. It, that was it's, beautiful. It's not that about it was this, beautiful. Man. Vince McMahon did not create wrestling. There was wrestling before Vince. There will be wrestling after Vince. You know, he didn't create everything and they didn't create us. <laughs> you know, there, I feel considering how negative everything is these days and considering how cynical I am, I do believe that, like we said, Vince didn't create everything. And I think there's a big possibility that wrestling can actually not just match where it was in the 80s or 70s. I think it can be a lot bigger than it ever was, ever, 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 without any stench of of McMahon or anything on it. I think, listen, if you, I, I think that mixed martial arts in the world really changed things. And I, I think that it split, it split the pro wrestling world Actually, I think people that go to UFC in America now are the same people who would have gone to see WWF, WCW, and NWA in the 80s, for example. 
I think that pro wrestling fans, it's it's a mix of everything right now. But I do feel like if done correctly, pro wrestling can be like back when it was like Jim Lundos bringing hundreds of thousands of people to an arena. All yeah. you need is a good story and two people that fans believe. And in. also it's publicly traded entity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not somebody's, you know, almost like a family dynasty. You know, it's bigger. It's an idea. Better. It's yeah, concept. Yeah. It's art yeah. form. And also, I think that uh, bringing in this public, you know, hero rock into the, the board member is is great PR. Yeah. And also, yeah, a lot of people have a hard time accepting rock as heel, but it's like finally Hollywood, Hollywood, you know, rock that it's a, it's if you just keep doing this, if you smell what the rock is cooking, it's like a rerun of what he used to be. Mm -hmm. If Rock, you know, if Rock should be relevant, this is his new new chapter too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you because know, Hogan was bigger somewhat with NWO Hogan. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of. So he, he he, his... Two different chapter. It's good. Yes. Terry Funk. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. D different, different Terry Funk. Yeah. Texas Bronco to hardcore funk to like really old and clunky funk and all we all love them but the, yeah different era different character and different evolution to it Jericho you know. and oh Jericho stay relevant yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's important it seems like it's it seems like it's very important to to yeah so the same way that the Rossi is relevant that yeah. this is not his second set of stardom it will be something different. That the new stars, you know, the new company name, new logo, new storyline, new roster. S some of the main event, you know, rest of the film started will be there, but uh, mainly the aiming five years, three years, five years, ten years from now, it's a completely different roster, different roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But his and approach. Yeah. But I don't think Stardom will this Bush Road version of Stardom will develop new talent. I don't think. We'll see. Well, they'd have a different philosophy, it seems like, at the Bushy Road Fight Company. Yeah, because they, I don't think they understand the importance of dojo and, you know, training rookie and make them into somebody. Mm. They or they like somebody that are already somebody. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. They, yeah. they want a hot commodity to sell as quickly as possible. Yeah, because it's a product and a content, you know, and not into young lions or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes that can be a slow process, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's how you create that long-term fandom. You, you you can create yeah, short-term fans, but... you know, for wrestling fans and wrestling people, wrestling should last forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It depends on who's in charge and how they are looking or their scope. How long yeah. is it? Are they are they looking at? You know, it's going to be March next. So fiscal I year is ending. Them, so. the, yeah, it's like. Uh, they are having a hard time coming up with tomorrow's lineup, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let so, alone Cinderella tournament or the, the, what's the best of, yeah. Uh, well, Grand Prix or? Uh, Grand Prix tournament to tag team Grand Prix to, yeah. That just, the calendar year Rossi created, if you remember, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. it yeah. was like a like a seasonal. There, there were certain tournaments and certain yeah, and then the calendar year thing, yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they're, I'm sure they're doing it because they're keeping their red belt and white belt and, and all the tag team belts and all these things, you know. But yeah, we'll see what happens because Rossi said they're done with this, you know. I think what we can learn is you can really tell the more you watch, the more you study, the more you can tell the people in charge, are they wrestling people or are they not wrestling people? And I think it matters. It, it's good to be a fan and have that, that eye to just kind of think you don't have to you know make any decisions, but it's always good to be thinking about it. Like, do I like this? Do I not? Why? So who's in charge? Yeah. But not, it can't be just wrestling fan, mm -hmm. but the, Knowing what wrestling fans want is interesting, but you have to go above that too. You know, it, it it's it's work, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, all right. So did did you have any questions? Because you you heard uh, other people's, you know, what they're talking about. Rossi, the stardom, and this and the split, Exodus, and this. 
no, I, I'm very clear on. I don't want to give any credence to the the silliness that I read on the internet or hear and are and people talk in a way like the world is going to end. The wrestling world is ending because this. Is, yeah, because just as soon as this Rossi, you know, contract being terminated by Bushiroad executive, that that about an hour later, they, you know, on, on X, Twitter, and other, you know, the, the social media, you know, Rossi and Julia, WWE bound. <laughs> and I know it's all it's it's all about the speed. Not of the whole the story. world is America. I. I you I have I mean? to, like, oh lot, my God, lot, I feel like a lot of American people, you know, think that oh. the, the entire world is America. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to get them out of that thinking. It's, yeah. it's terrible, to be honest. It's a terrible <laughs> time. It's a terrible time. Yeah. But yeah, we live in a world where people can respond. And I don't think they, I don't think people even feel a hundred percent of what they type. They just kind of say it on impulse and they don't, understand the effect this that day and age, it's out there it's out just there and it affects as, people yeah it's just just as soon as you type something it's out there but it could hit somebody on the other side of the river another way you know yeah, yeah. It, it's good well, to okay. get yeah. first first hand info so thank you for the first hand info you are there so it, if you're gonna f- trust the information it's good to trust the information from somebody who's there not somebody who's heard something on a podcast from a person who talked to a friend of another person who kind of was at the show, yada, yada, yada. Fumi-san was there. He w- I, I, it's so amazing that you can be as close to a situation as possible. I've had this situ- uh, feeling myself recently with Noah. The, you, you, you have the exact information the precise information on what's going on. And even when you say it to people, they just won't even believe you. They And they don't want to believe you. They refuse to believe you. And it's like, I, it's not like, it's not an opinion. I'm not trying to change my, this is how it is. And people just, it's amazing. Some of the, I, I've been so surprised over the past two years. That yeah. I'm amazed. But that's not a, about the change. It's getting worse. It's, <laughs> I'm it's very okay, jaded. Rossi is going to announce all these shortly, and they will have announced the new company's name and logo right mm. away. And they will announce the first card. Oh, they will announce who's on it. Yeah, mm, all these mm. yeah it's going to come real quick. All right. We'll keep our eyes peeled. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have the email that we'll put right on the bottom, but I guess until next time. So long from Tokyo.